Hey everyone, I'm 1301. It's Dr. E and I'm here with this week's instructional video. We're into week two. Um, hopefully you're getting familiar with the class and everything that is located on D2L. Um, it may take a little bit of time to get completely comfortable there and that's okay. Just keep clicking, keep looking at things and you'll get more confident and comfortable. I'm going to go ahead and pull up D2L to show you this week's schedule. Um, I'll be in the content area in the module for week two. Um, don't be overwhelmed if you see items that you're not familiar with because I'm in my account, which has a few more options than you are likely seeing in your account. Don't worry, we're just going to hit on the important stuff that you need to know for this week. Okay, so I'm going to pull that up here. You'll notice that we have the schedule for week two. Um, on Monday, uh, you know, the videos, I know I promised last week that we would have fewer videos, but I lied and I'm sorry for that because in addition to the reading journal video, there's also a pretty brief video available that you'll want to look at for discussion posts just to show you the rubric for discussion post grading and all of that. It is located right down here. Um, so I would add that to your list. And then of course the prompt uh, has been posted for uh, this week's writing discussion. Um, I want you to note that there were an, there was an error with the date on the original schedule, so I did make some updates and I posted not only here the correct schedule, but uh, over on the left-hand side where the syllabus and schedule, I have updated that document as well. So if you printed something out, just go in and make those corrections by hand or print out the new version. Um, I, this may happen a lot. I tend to find mistakes, um, but want to correct them as quickly as possible and let you know. So Sunday the 31st, you will respond to two of your colleagues in this area right here um, in that writing discussion. Don't worry, it says writing journal discussion. That's the same as the writing discussion. Um, and then for next week, you'll begin reading, uh, meeting the expectations of academic writing, and that's in our course text. Um, and then start your reading journal entries this week, right? That's something that you'll want to start this week, and there is a video for that. I'm going to scroll down a little bit to show you all the items. Remember that if you see the check mark here, that just means that I've been in and out of these spaces. Um, it doesn't mean that the work is completed. So don't be thrown when you see check marks in, in your account. So there is a video for the discussion post rubric guidelines. You will want to watch that in addition to the video on the reading journal rubric and guidelines. I say that you should watch them not only because it's important to see what those assignments entail and what the expectations and the grading will be, um, but also because I've asked questions about those videos in your weekly participation quiz for week two. Um, so make sure that you watch and, and pay some attention uh, to those because questions will come up. So watch those. Um, but you'll see here is the uh, discussion post rubric guidelines, and here is an actual copy of that discussion post rubric. There's the video for the reading journal and rubric guidelines, and then there's the actual reading journal assignment and guidelines, and then there's the reading journal template. So if you watch that video, you know, you'll know you note that I created a template that you can use from here on out to um, start collecting all the journal entries for your reading uh, as we move through the weeks. I want you to note that I did upload a copy of the chapter that we are to read this week. It's called What's Your Style? Um, I want you to note that this is likely the only chapter I'll be able to update. There are copyright issues with too many chapters being shared. Um, so please make sure that you get a hold of your book. Whether you have the online version, uh, which you can access instantly, or if you have the printed version, uh, which you can get from the bookstore or through the Norton Publishing website, all of that information has been available on D2L. I do want you to note that if you purchase the print copy, you should have a little card on the inside that will allow you access to the online version as well. So it's just a perk. Um, but if you have only the online version, that works just as well. Okay, so make sure that you're getting your hands on, on that book and that's the proper edition and whatnot. Uh, so there's that. And then we have Irvin's uh, article, which is what is the academic what is academic writing um, both of these readings are a nice way to kind of introduce us to some ideas about writing in general um, the book chapter talks about style and tone and audience and some of those basic things uh, that we want to consider when we think about writing in general but certainly academic writing um, and then Irvin's article really gets to the root of you know what do we think academic writing is 
but also what is it really, right? We have all these ideas about it, what, and what it might entail, but he kind of breaks down some of the myths associated with writing and also really identifies what we need to focus on when we think of academic writing. So it's a good kind of intro into a semester like, like we're focused on. Okay, so the readings are here, and then we have week two's discussion post. Um, and it is going to be based on both of the readings, so you need to make sure that you've completed those and you're ready to uh, respond to the prompts. Um, and additionally, you'll want to make sure that you start your reading journal entries with both of these texts. I don't care what order they're in. You can put Irvin's first or the chapter first, uh, the chapter by Lunsford. Uh, you just need to start putting all the readings into that reading journal document that you will eventually submit. If this all sounds wacky and confusing to you, then definitely go back to not only the reading journal assignment guidelines, but that video as well. I'm going to click on the week two writing discussion just because I want to hit on a few things. Um, the first is that, uh, you know, I've bolded some things that we want to make sure we, we pay attention to. Um, and I'm just going to click start a new thread. Please remember to put your name in the subject line here. It's just really helpful when it comes to the grading process and the responding process. Um, make sure that your name is there. I do want you to note that I went in and um, I responded to all of your introductions, which were wonderful. It's so neat to get a chance to um, kind of get to know one another, right? Um, so I responded, you know, go in and look at the other folks who have responded to you. Some people were really trying to engage and that's what I mean um, by engagement in general. We are not face to face with one another. We're not having um, a timed meeting every week. So the discussion posts become that kind of conversation space. So when you're responding to one another, show that you've read, show that you understand. Um, for the introduction, it was just kind of general, but for moving forward, you want to respond to the person's ideas. You want to relate to the person's ideas about the writing or about the assignment. Um, you don't want to just offer a general, hey, I agree. That's You need three to four sentences that's in the rubric, um, but you also need to kind of work on what would we talk about if we were together having a conversation about these texts or these ideas, okay? So show that you've read, but y'all, you also need to make sure that you're editing and revising those posts because those are just as important in terms of your grade as what you originally post for your response to the prompt. Just letting you know. But again, it was really nice to kind of get to know one another with the introduction posts, so thanks for sharing all of that. Okay, another thing I want you to notice is that when you have the text box here, you have various options you can choose from. Okay, you have uh, the paragraph, you don't need to do anything about that, but you can bold. I mean, there's no necessarily reason to bold. You may italicize if you're talking about the title of a text, but we'll get more into that with MLA. Uh, font family, I really have a hard time with anything other than Times New Roman, uh, but that's more for those assignments that you will submit um, in the assignments portion that are typed in Microsoft Word. Um, so don't worry about changing the, the font or the size, but if you click on the little uh, the ellipses, the dot, dot, dot right here, you have some other options, but what I really want you to notice comes down here. So this button will be a spell check feature. So I have said, and I'll continue to say, the best option is going to be to start drafting your work in Microsoft Word, just so that you can save you know, your work in a single place, just in case D2L times out, or your electricity goes out, or one of the you know million things that could possibly happen. You'll have it saved somewhere. You can set up Microsoft Word to auto-save. Um, if you're familiar with using Google Docs, Google Docs nicely auto-saves for you, but Microsoft Word won't unless you set up that feature. But that's, that's pretty easy and pretty straightforward. So you should be using the spell check features in Google Docs or in Microsoft Word. But when you're responding to one another, you can always use the spell check feature down here at the bottom. And you have these other options as well. So if you click on this one, it's checking for accessibility. You know, it's just things that you can do. But I really wanted to point out the spell check feature because we, we should be paying attention to that. A lot of you mentioned in your introductory post that you were worried about grammar and spelling. We don't need to be grammar or spelling experts, right? We just need to know where to go and the tools to use, right? So Microsoft Word is something that I definitely urge students to consider. The website Grammarly, 
use it, right? Why not use those resources? Um, this is using those kinds of tools is different than taking somebody's work from the internet or using some of those kinds of websites, right? Um, those we're talking about just tools that can help you. We don't need to be the experts. So use the spell check feature, but I'm also going to pull up, this is Microsoft Word, right? And this is, it will correct as you go, right? It'll, it capitalized my first letter here. It has the red underlining for spelling or capitalization issues. It will have a green squiggly line noting some grammar issues. And y'all, it's not perfect. It's not going to catch absolutely everything, but it's a great place to start especially in a writing class where you're graded on your writing, right? So something to consider. I also want to pull up to show you, oh, let's see. Uh, this is a Google document. So I'm in Google Docs um, and you'll notice, I mean, the font, all of that stuff will have to eventually update for a MLA formatted paper, but we're talking just about the discussion posts right now you'll see that there are squiggly lines underneath. It's working to catch those spelling issues. So I'm just gonna right click and it's asking, did you mean grammar, right? Did you consider changing to spelling? It's offering you these kinds of options, right? You're in editing mode, so you can make those adjustments and those changes. So I'm just gonna keep saying it, but start using those features in Microsoft Word, in Google Docs, in Grammarly, you know, there are various uh, resources that you can utilize um, that will help with that. Okay, and I encourage you to use any any of them that are going to help. Okay, so I'm going to go back to um, D2L and I'm going to go back to our week two module. This isn't it. Give me a second. Oh, goodness. Okay. So in the week two module, that's the writing discussion, right, which is due on Thursday. And then you'll see a link for the quiz. When you click here, it will take you to the quiz. And I put here, make sure that you have not only um, viewed the videos, right? So viewed all the instructional videos. There were three this week, including this one. Um, but you also need to make sure that you've done your reading because there will be questions about all of this. I'm not trying to trick you with these questions. These are questions that are meant to be kind of straightforward and things that you don't have to go through searching every single line for, um, but that should be pretty obvious. In some of the readings, I am going to push you to find certain parts, um, but you can take your time with it. There will be a clock that's counting down from 120 minutes. Don't worry about that, right? Take your time, um, but only start the quiz when you're kind of ready to complete everything. Okay, and it's not due until Sunday at 11.59 p.m. So at that point, you should have watched all the videos, done all the reading, and all of that kind of information. Um, if you have any questions, please go to the Q&A area in the discussion board. It is anonymous, so your name won't be connected with your post. If you have that question, other people are going to have that question as well. So it's helpful to post there. Uh, but you can always email me and let me know if you have any questions or concerns. I responded to all the emails I received from last week. Um, so if you didn't get one from me, then maybe let me know. Uh, but it was so nice to kind of meet with y'all in the introductions and to hear from you in the email. So here's hoping for another great week. Good luck, everyone.